The data is clear. If you want to improve your cognitive function, in other words, you want to think smarter, you want to feel sharper, you want a brain that works well into old age, one of the best things you can do, now this again is according to the data, is to get stronger. Strength training in particular is one of the only forms of exercise or any non-medical intervention that shows improvements in cognitive function. In fact, some studies even show it stops the progression of the beta amyloid plaques that are related to Alzheimer's and dementia. So again, if you want to be smart, lift some weights. This one's pretty cool because the studies on this, I'm going to read to you guys this stuff. Are there IQ studies like to show that? Bro, I got to, I'll, I'll read you guys like a wild one. Okay. Really? So and this one, this one was done. Now the Alzheimer's one, I quote in, uh, in the book, um, the resistance training revolution, because this was the first time that an intervention has halt has been shown to halt the degeneration of the brain over a long period of time. Um, uh, you know, that's related to Alzheimer's. So I've talked about that one before and that was uh, done out of Sydney, Australia and it blew people's minds because we'd never seen that progression stop, mm -hmm. uh, especially not with a non-medical uh, intervention. But this other study was really interesting. It's a little bit of an older one, but, um, and I had never seen this one before, but check this out. This particular study took uh, a group of people, um, a total of, it was 68 women and 32 men between the ages of 55 to 86, okay? So this is when you, this is the age range you start to see cognitive impairment, right? You start to see cognitive decline. One group did strength training twice a week, okay? Just lift weights twice a week. Mm -hmm. The other group didn't do anything. They didn't do nothing. They did stretching exercises twice a week. So stretching exercises versus strength training. Yeah. Here's what they found. The strength training group scored significantly higher at the end of the study than at the beginning, and they retained that gain 12 months later. Here's the best part, though. The scores of the, uh, the, the gains in the test scores was greatest for those who had the greatest gains in strength. Oh, interesting. There was a relationship between the increase in strength and the improvement in cognitive function Is, by the end of the study. You think that has something to do with, like, uh, the insulin sensitivity yes. because of building more muscle and yes. then you, okay. Yes. Directly. Interesting. hundred huh. percent. If you look at, um, like the studies on, um, you know, neurodegenerative disorders or cognitive impairment, you'll typically see a slight boost or improvement when you take those people and you cut their carbs out and put them on a ketogenic diet. Now the solution isn't a ketogenic diet. Okay. So everybody, I want to be clear with that, but what it, the reason why they see cognitive improvements is because there's this impaired ability for the brain to utilize glucose. That's what, that there's something going on there. Now, we don't know if that's the root or if it's part of it, but we do know that there's an impairment in the brain's ability to utilize energy. So it's like you have a computer and now you're giving it half the power or, you know, maybe getting some power sometimes or not. So the computer's just not going to work as well. So what they do is they'll put them on a ketogenic diet, then they'll start to run off the of ketones. Mm -hmm. And it, they'll have improved cognitive function. All right, what does this have to do with building muscle? Building muscle is one of the most effective ways to improve insulin sensitivity because muscle stores glycogen. It's Glycogen comes from carbohydrates and sugar. So your liver stores glycogen, but so do your muscles. So you make them bigger. You'll, store, you'll have more, you'll have a larger capacity to pull sugar out of the blood mm. and store it and utilize it. And muscle is also very insulin sensitive. So muscle and brain is very closely related in that particular sense. So the people who got strongest did the best. And I, that's my guess as to why, but it's really interesting. Have you seen any stuff on like, uh, like, a, like the amount of lean body mass, like a correlation between that and like diabetes and stuff like that. Have you seen anything around those? Yes. Yeah. I wonder if we have, like we yes. do, we All, do. people with diabetes, diabetes, uh, are very often have sarcopenia, um, loss of muscle. Mm -hmm. yeah. very closely related. Um, so even people who are overweight with diabetes, we used to think, I remember as this came out maybe 10 years ago, maybe a little more. It'd be cool to see, sorry to interrupt you. No I just, you my brain's going this down this rabbit hole of like, it would be cool to see like if we had a chart for based off of your weight, 
if you had X amount of pounds of lean body mass, your likelihood of diabetes mm, would be yeah. reduced Drops, to the, like yeah, yeah, right? Like, oh, you're percentage. you're 180 pounds. Yeah. If you've got 100 and- Maybe a ratio of your height yeah, and all that stuff, yeah. Yeah, like some, something like that, right? So like you're basically, I would just say, I think weight would be would suffice, right? You just, based off of this weight, if X amount of that is lean body mass- yeah your your potential of you know uh, not having diabetes would be this high like so people had like a really good target of like okay that's a good goal i don't want that to happen yeah. this, this is going to be good for overall health so this is how much i weigh i want to make sure i have this and yeah. go on a muscle building yeah is think it, of it think of it this way uh building muscle in in all the studies that we have on this building muscle is building the brain yeah losing muscle is probably also losing the brain. And there's a lot of, I mean, it's very complicated. I I, I said one thing, like it was very complicated, right? Because what- Yeah, I was going to say, there's got to be a multitude of factors to that as well. But I was just trying to think about that of like, you know, some kind of neural demand. Like, some, yes. like so say like, you know, generating force and, and the, the overall demand uh, output wise in terms of like your brain having to um, sort of send that signal louder signal for you to be able to lift objects and be able to utilize, you know, the muscle tissue. For sure. Sure. Absolutely. You know, like your brain gets stronger. I would like almost like a muscle tissue. I'm sure the brain has some sort of uh, you know, parallel. To muscle that. is a very, um, I mean, it's it's a it's an organ of the body. I guess you could put it in that category, if you will. I, I know that's not technically what it is, but um, it's very sensitive. There's receptors in muscle that that sense pressure and position. A contraction, uh, you know, it's a it's a feedback mechanism. Tells the body when you're in danger, when you're in pain. Um, it stores glycogen, like I said. It's got hor it's it's hormone sensitive. It puts out chemicals itself when you exercise. There are chemicals and peptides that are put out from muscles that do things like reduce inflammation and yeah, uh, you know, uh, increase BDNF in the brain, which is like uh, it's like fertilizer for for brain cells. I was mentioning um, years ago, I don't remember how long, I want to say 10 or 15 years ago. Do you guys remember there was a, it was like an image, an MRI image of an obese person and then a normal weight person. And it it completely dispelled the myth that if you were overweight, you probably also had more muscle mass. No, and what it showed no. was, it's not true. Yeah. That we, if we used you're to over yeah, we used to think that, oh, that this person's 300 pounds. They got to yeah. carry that weight around. They yes. also would have to have more muscle in order to do no, that. No, there's a sarcopenia connection too. Overweight people tend to have less muscle mass um, than people who are normal weight. So, so there's like muscle, and it's like Dr. Gabriel Lyon talks about this, how we don't have an over, you know, an obesity issue. Uh, under it's, muscle. It's an under muscled yeah. type of issue. But yeah, for, for the brain, like build, like build muscle is what you want to do. Now I know people are going to look at this and go the extremes and jocks, dude. bodybuilders and all that stuff. They but it wrong. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm not talking about the unnatural, right? But and you're right too, Justin. You know what's weird or sad, I should say, is is popular media has painted athletes and muscle as yeah. dumb. Yes, which is not, it's not only not true; it's the opposite of true. Yeah. So you take a you take a dumb person. <laughs> You have them exercise and build muscle. They're less dumb. Yeah. You know, of course, they're not going to become a genius. Well, where do you think the, the little nerds had to have something? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Today's giveaway here on YouTube is Maps Strong. If you want to enter to win, leave us a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we post this up. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. Do all of those things. Then we'll go through the comments. And if you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We also have a sale going on this month on some workout programs. MAPS Performance is 50% off. And then our Extreme Fitness Bundle of Programs is also 50% off. If you're interested or you want to learn more, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Where, I, I mean, obviously that stigma comes from somewhere. Where do you think it stems from? I think it's, I think that generally speaking, people that uh, were attracted, probably the whole like, you know, the, the people who do the engineering and who do that kind of stuff are not interested in those other things and they look a particular way. Jocks look a particular way and they're more interested in yeah. maybe athletics. So that might yeah, be I think it. there's I think there's a there's a, a it's a, not a good I think control. there's a dumb jock part that it, the vanity part that is a, that attracts probably a lower sure. IQ. But then I think there's also a, a, the upper echelon of super high performing people that have actually hacked into knowing that right. health and fitness is also a part I've of super both, so. super yeah, high performance. Yeah. So I think it's somewhere in the middle 
is this like, oh yeah, this kind of dumb jock or like, oh, because they're not very smart, too, you, so you defer like, to yeah. lifting weights and looking good, right? But then there's the other end of the spectrum that is like super high performing people for the most part, not all, but for the most part have hacked into the importance of a healthy diet, a healthy sleep regimen and weight training. Yeah. And like those super high performing people tend to be healthy. I also. just think if you look at the extremes of, cause we tend to look at the extremes and then we, we make generalizations. Right, if you look right. at the extremes of performance, you don't have a lot of time to spend developing other areas of your life. Like if you're like a high level athlete, mm -hmm. You're not like, you're, you're probably not, not, yeah, you're not going to medical school no. and spending all your time doing that. And if you're going to medical yeah. school, like you ain't got tons of time to go be some super, you know, jack person. The real study is take, take a person and have them be fit versus less fit and then measure their brain performance and their mm -hmm. IQ. And you'll see a difference. You'll see a difference. It's funny because we forget the brain is a part of the body. Yeah. So a healthy body means you have a healthy brain as right. well. It's really interesting. It's going to impact the brain substantially. Yeah, yes. it's going to work better. So yeah, the more you, all of your systems are working, you know, in unison, the the more, uh, you know, productive you are. So it's yeah, it's it's hilarious that we just like focus on oh if it's the brain we're just going to read more and we're going to like yeah. wow that stereo input. that stereotype goes all the way back to 500 BC when Greek athletes were criticized for the. In, in inordinate inordinate, amount, inordinate of time. amount of time they used in preparation for competition and for neglecting their intellectual. See, that's you spend so much time on one thing. That's all it is. It's, it's because they're training constantly physically, where the philosophers were up there like noodling about the, the meaning of life. Yeah, but I wonder in today's time. So I, this would be interesting too to see how many athletes post their professional sport go on to be very successful in business because I would think that some of the attributes that it was required in order to be a very successful athlete at the of highest course. level also of play course. very play very well into building a business of and be course. successful in life. Oh yeah, you know, I mean we all know so, that. So you know, even yeah. if totally you fall translates. Yeah, right? I, uh -huh. I mean, you know what the thing too is we confuse knowledge with uh like brain power or intellectual capacity. Like like I'll use my wife as an example. Um, she has incredible brain power. She's, she learns things and she's very intelligent, but she grew up not valuing school. She hated school. So she didn't like learn things. But when I met her and we'd have these conversations, she's obviously very intelligent. And then she went off on her own to learn certain things. So you could have knowledge and not have tons of brain power. You could have tons of brain power and not have knowledge. Exercise, strength training improves your brain power. It doesn't mean you're going to know shit. You still have to go learn stuff. I also think that uh, you add in the fact too that the, <laughs> school is like this. I mean, being good at school it doesn't make you a smart of course, person. No, <laughs> it means. Well, you, that's what I, she used to think. That she's like, well, I don't uh, know a lot of things. I'm like you had, you went to shitty. Schools that's been so bastardized, dude. I mean, the, that that was that was created to to make you into a worker bee. You know, in yep. corporate America, that wasn't designed to challenge you to be super smart or reach your upper limits of intellect. I, did, I don't think that's at no. all. So we've, we've conflated this idea of, Oh, you, you're good at school. Therefore you're smart. Like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't no, agree with that Not necessarily. No, not at all. Not at I all. wish they, it's funny that they, they used to, uh, you know, they were talking about ancient Greece and all that. You know, they used to value philosophy, uh, music, like, like the, this actual thinking, yeah, like how to think about things and conceptualize things. They don't do that anymore. I, I think that's a, such a loss. Yeah, well, I mean, that's that's kind of like um, uh, what's his name, um, who who always spins spins uh, spins it back. God, what's oh, that? the guy we had on the show. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, Jim Quick. Uh, Jim, yeah, Quick. Jim Quick. So oh, yeah. he, yeah, the broken brain. He teaches people how to learn. Yeah, yeah, which is like something you don't. No, there's no course like that in school, which I think is is quite ridiculous. Yeah. Like, you know, to, to to have them be able to think for themselves and like analyze, um, you know, the best way to kind of uh, put it all together uh, for because it's such like an individual thing at the same time too, like how everybody learns and like their best methods. So why not, you know, lean into that more as Dude. opposed to like just memorizing things. Did I tell you guys, or did I talk about on the show about what the, what at Max's school, like what the teachers teach when they can't, when a kid can't solve a problem. So uh -oh. like I didn't tell you guys that. No. Oh, so we had like this the, the parent teacher conference thing for like the next grade and stuff like that. And uh, one of the parents was all stressed out that the, the, these kids are like learning math at a, a high rate. And she was like, you know, within a year or two, I feel like I'm not gonna be able to teach my kid math, <laughs> help yeah. him with his homework or like that. 
And one of the teachers said, uh, well, that's not your job. Our job is to, to teach your, your kids math and, and these subjects. And if they don't, we've already taught your kid on what he's supposed to do. And she's like, what's that? And she's like, yeah, if, you, if your kid has homework and they can't solve the problem, they know to circle it. They don't even have to answer it. They circle it and say, I don't know how to do this. Mm. And then when they come to class the next day, the teacher works it out with them oh, and teaches them that's the process good. of figuring that out. Like I was like, oh, that's so cool yeah, that way better. they do that. That versus, way they don't feel bad. About right. Versus, exactly. You don't yeah. feel, and it's like, and you're not, you don't feel this pressure of like, you know, I don't know how to do it. So I'm either going to one, cheat my way yeah. or ask my dad Otherwise, to give me the I'm answer. Get left behind. Right. Or make up an answer like that. No, instead, I, just, I don't, I don't know. So I circle mm. and they, they're supposed to circle. I don't know. And then when they, when they get to class, teacher will sit down with them. And then before they leave that day, that kid will understand how, how to solve that problem. And I'm like, oh my God, that's I so like that. awesome that they're teaching them that like the critical thinking around that versus just, this is the answer or expecting you to turn in a homework. It's either complete or incomplete. It's like, no, it's not about that. It's about you understanding how to there's, solve the there problem. There seems to be a shift in how uh, people are viewing education and starting to look at it a little bit, a little bit better. Like we grew up and, and still up until recently, it's just about getting an education. It's like, no, 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 go get your degree. That makes you work, make more money, whatever. And it's like, almost like it didn't matter yeah. what you learned. Right. Like the conversation I have with my kids is I tell them like, yeah, getting education is great, but look at the market and see what, where the value is. Otherwise you can go learn stuff for free. Where are you going to get return? Yeah. You know? It makes no sense to go get a, a you know, a, a 70,000 or a hundred thousand or plus dollar degree or get a loan especially for where it's worth nothing on the market what are mm -hmm. you doing you just yeah. you literally have just put yourself backwards and it's not worth anything and a lot of people have done that a lot of people are just like oh no no i got to go to school well, what are you learning and you yeah. and then they their career like they have to learn everything all over again like from the scratch just to like do their careers so well you don't you have you have uh jordan peterson you have i believe elon musk now yeah i think apple or google i mean the education is getting disrupted. It's yeah, happening. It's happening this next decade. Like we are going to see it, isn't it massively disrupted? Wait, did is it was it Tesla that says that he didn't know they no longer require a, a bachelor? I believe that's. Really? I believe it's. Yeah, I think it was Tesla. Cool. But I know Elon's. I know he's. I know he's getting into into that in that realm also. I know that Peterson already launched his right. His school mm -hmm. got launched last November. I mm -hmm. think it was. So his school, his Isn't, school's- uh, What's his name doing the same thing? Who's that ex-Navy SEAL, Jocko? Doesn't he have one too? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I think he has like an, a, a course or school for- Sweet. What yeah. do you got Do you want to do work at the Tesla? Yeah, you, yeah Tesla, do not, Tesla does not require college degrees of any kind. Huh. Yep. And he put, literally he tweeted, educational background is irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> How do you not like some stuff he said? <laughs> so well, I mean, maverick. you don't if you were, if you were- the the opposite family or kid that got brought up into it and because i mean you still by the way this conversation will offend a percentage of the people listening right now because there's some people that that's their their, their my mom's a teacher yeah. my grandma's a teacher like everybody were like that was that's still so important and they value it for whatever reasons yeah. and so well the case I've they always, feel offended by yes. i saw in fact somebody dm me after one of the last times we had a comment a conversation about this i don't remember what it was related to but it was like we were we were talking about that and they were talking about Oh, I think we were talking about having a degree in business. And I think we were kind of poo-pooing that yeah. whole, like, what, you know, what's the point of having this, this a degree in business, but you've never actually got out and tried to build a business. And somebody, some girl, you know, she got a high paying job because she had that, you know, master's degree in that field. So because of that, it allowed her to get a job where they paid her very well for it. But as far as like her actual experience, here's the argument that business, I would make. Like, yeah. Here's the argument that I would make. So how long did it take you to get that degree? So however many years, how long does it take to get a master's typically? What, six years? Yeah, at least six. Okay. So six years of intent of, of school, look at the debt that that put you in. So yeah. probably we could safely say what, a hundred thousand dollars at the very least, a hundred thousand dollars in debt after six years. What if she went and got a job entry level at the place she's trying, she got a job at now, yeah. worked there for six years, had a mentor where would she be at the end of six well, years? Well, yeah, that's if, so the problem is, is that, and I believe that was the, the part of the argument is that you couldn't get that job without- Not that. not that, but you could have got something else and maybe yeah, worked your way through. Sure, something right. else. That's a, that's a possibility. That's the thing, because people think that like that six years doesn't count. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? You're going to sit at home for six years? I mean, there's also, there's also the argument this, like, so like, I mean, I'm, I'm getting to watch this, right? Firsthand with my son and when the school he's going through, like, and I've been very happy with the things that I'm watching yeah. them. And it's like, you know, would I have a different 
feeling about education had I gone through a different process through it. Like if I got, if I was raised in a school like he is, he goes all the way to high school, right? So I have this great experience in, in high school, college prep. Yeah. And then I go off to a really good college that is maybe teaching me critical thinking, so like that. I mean, Harvard's kind of known for that, isn't it? Har Harvard's known for like teaching a lot of their their students to think outside the box. A lot of these students create some crazy business while they're in Harvard yeah. Business School, and so there's there's schools that are pushing. Yeah, it's true. Kids it really that, does. They're not all the on same. the school and the professor yeah. And yeah. The background and yeah, like I you know when I was going for my business minor, I had a really good teacher because he was in it. Like he had a he had two. Fortune 500 businesses that he was running. See? And, and like, so he had a lot of really valuable contributions. I can but, only imagine. But there was a few that didn't. You right. Know? And so it was like, you know, it was hit or miss. But because uh, that could, that could be okay. You go through school just like my son does. Then he goes to, let's say, a college and he gets your professor for there who's got two Fortune yeah. 500. I mean, that's like being mentor. I couldn't imagine being 18 years old. And because when I was 18, I was trying to figure this, you know, dairy personal training thing out. Like no, you're right. I'm trying to just swim. Had I been sitting after all that great schooling that I went through, like my son is going through, and then I get into a college and I get your professor who's already got two Fortune 500 companies or anything. I mean, that's like mentorship. And yeah, knowing right. the type of kid that I am, I would have been pulling on his shirt all the time, being like, oh, what's it like? And what are yeah. the mistakes you made? And oh, asking him yeah. questions. And like, that's the other thing too about kids today like that. You and can I get think, that with networking though, to your other point. Yeah. You can. I mean, obviously, I, we're, we're, we're proof that I didn't, obviously I'm proof that I didn't have to go to, to college and do that. But yeah. I also think in the defending the people that I know that get defensive when we have conversations like this, is there there is a path or a potential path that you could have had that could have been as successful or maybe even possibly more. If I would have got, if you would have thrown me into Justin's college after going through school like my son is going through right now, and I got a professor like that in business, you could argue that I'd be further along. There's today. a lot. The, the point isn't that it's it's worthless. The point is that there's a lot of paths, but the but sold is that there's only one path. Sure. That's sure. what's sold. Yeah. And yeah. there's nothing more unequal. People talk about, oh, you know, things need to be equal and we need equity or whatever. The most unequal thing you'll ever find in your life is public education. Ever. Yeah. You go to a public school it, in, it varies, so in a wealthy area yeah. versus one in a not so wealthy area, even though they're both publicly funded, and you will find vastly different experience. Yeah vastly different yeah and so it's not the same experience so yeah, yeah. i you know i think i mean i'm playing devil's advocate right sure I mean, obviously uh i mean you and i didn't right so no. out of i had four, terrible i didn't even go to bad it's not like i went to bad yeah. public schools but, but you know the irony is though do you have a do you have a friend do you have a single friend that has their phd or their master's or the degree that makes more money than you no either do i yeah so i mean i i there is obviously other paths to do that but i do think that there. i do think there can be a really good path through school if you choose the right the right teachers, the right schooling, yeah. like, I mean, and honestly, that's probably you probably as a dad. Now, the biggest takeaway for me is that being involved in your knowing what your kids yes. are like, to me, that is like, yes. because what you, what one paying attention to, what are they teaching them and, and being involved in that as a parent, that's maybe right. the most powerful thing that you can do. Of course. So mm -hmm. even if maybe my son didn't have the greatest school ever, it, but if I am paying attention to these things, by the way, too, like the, I don't know if you guys saw my story the other day with the, uh, the book thing, man, I'm so proud. Like it's taken him uh almost a week. I cannot believe that my son has a box, a present up on the shelf that he And he's working towards. And he's working towards it. And it doesn't even phase him. In fact, he took a day off of reading one day. I was just like, <laughs> that trips me the fuck out. That he's got eleven books to read. He knows he can't open that until he finishes the books. And he'll he knocks out two a day. You know, so I took a day off on the weekend because we were watching cartoons and movies and no stuff like that. No way. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Today, this morning, he woke up. That is such a great Tired, and I said, hey, I told him, I said, hey, uh, I said, you only got one more book today. Today, you finish your book, and then we'll open it up. He got, he lit up, got all excited. I said, well, when you get off of school, we'll we'll finish your last book, and then we'll open that That's up. That's so great. But I'm like, damn, dude, like, he's it's been up there for over a week now. That's yeah, hella patient. That's I awesome. know. I'm way more patient than I ever would have been. I would have figured I, out a way to climb I, up. I, or that, or I would have read all the, I would have read, like, he he technically could read all those books in easily a day or two. They're not like super long. They take him a while. They probably, probably take some 20. Yeah. And just, consistent. Yeah. That's just, so great. I know. So it's so cool how it's, awesome. uh, watching it unfold. It's all really, right. So right. I'm going to take a, a left turn here because I read about a conspiracy theory that I was not aware of. <laughs> and I, I'm going to bring it to Justin. Ooh, who's the, who's the, it's spicy. actually, this is actually not a conspiracy theory. It's actually happened. Have you heard of operation Popeye? No. 
operation this is a Popeye. real this was a real thing something to sell spinach this, this isn't related to yeah the cartoon is it? no uh, i know it, they name them weird shit was it they? to sell spinach is that something to do that no dude this is a real thing oh, okay this was a military cloud seeding project carried out by the u.s air force carried out they actually did this during the Vietnam War in 1967 to 1972, the highly classified program attempted to extend the monsoon season over specific areas of the Ho Chi Minh Trail mm -hmm. in order to disrupt the North Vietnamese military supplies by softening road surfaces and causing landslides. Okay, so wait a second. So we tried to mess with the weather to cause... Yeah monsoons over this is did you say vietnam war time yes try to extend the rainy season they the went so listen to this thinking that that would benefit us because the the the, the ho chi minh trail was with the 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 northern vietnam vietnamese army would carry supplies and stuff okay. so they thought if we can make the monsoon season long and wet it'll disrupt their ability to deliver supplies Interesting. And, stuff. Interesting. and they actually did it the 54th weather reconnaissance squadron carried out the operation using the slogan, Make Mud, Not War, starting on March 20th, 1967, <laughs> and continuing through every rainy season until 1972. So this was, what, I was like, five years? What is that? Isn't Four. that crazy? They did cloud seeding missions where they had three CC-130 Hercules aircraft and two F-4C Phantom aircraft. They would literally fly over and seed the clouds. So like Kim Troll type stuff? <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I mean, is that what it's like, though? I mean, I that's, mean, that's where the that's well, where the you, origins of that. Yeah, yeah, you seed it for more precipitation. It's just interesting that you would use it as like a, a weapon. Of course, we use it as a weapon, as opposed to just like you know using it at like countries that are that haven't had rainfall in decades. You know, to like help out humanity. They Instead, use we're just like lead iodide it. and silver iodide. They spray over the. Um, that doesn't sound like it's healthy for no. us. It doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> No, so it's the precipitation yeah, is going to be. Wow. I'm not going to stick my mouth open and you know. It, it was a chemical suck. weather modification Drink program. It. That's what it was. Wow. Isn't that insane? And that was way back then. I know. So, yeah, imagine. Yeah, what we have now. I mean, that, that's that's the kind that I, I think a lot of people just don't want to like recognize the fact that we we do have some really crazy messed up shit. messed up things. <laughs> like now we can actually manipulate weather. Or we can create. You know, wind. We can replicate like uh, uh, um, earthquakes, and and like we have like ways to like mess with nature now. That, that that's scary. Yeah, and it's that's like, it, oh, okay, cool. Like playing we'll, God. We'll probably bro. use it for good. Though. Playing God. Yeah, or we whether you believe in one or not, we're playing it. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh yeah. That's, that's okay. Harp, so do you? Right, so so do you? Harp, yeah. yeah. Do you do you believe we got something crazy coming this year? Oh, because of election season? Yeah. yeah, you'd be dumb not to. I Every mean, like, election season. I mean, like, but on the scale of like, uh, of, if if COVID is like ten crazy. Oh, like well, a like a like yeah, a yeah. election like, stopping event. Just yeah. Like here's here's my thought. Okay. Let's hear. Uh, I think that um, there's a lot of hype leading that way, and a lot of people are trying to like you know impose this fear. But I feel like there's a lot of fear already that they're just going to ride this fear. And nothing really is going to happen. In terms of like, what's the best thing to do is have everybody just constantly afraid and paranoid. That's like the the best to manipulate people. Yeah. It, as mm. opposed to having a real disaster. I, uh, that's a good question. Um, you know, the conspiracy theorist side of me is looking at the polls and the polls right now are showing Donald Trump leading in a, if a, if a presidential election were to, ha were to happen today, a general election. He cr obviously was crushed the primary, right? But a general election, he's ahead some polls by five, uh, five points, which is a big, pretty decent lead. Well, if he, if, if he has a strong lead leading up to, um, the election, because all established, whatever you want to call them forces, whatever, they do not want him anywhere near the you know presidential position they don't want him there at all yeah. everybody you yeah, see yeah. the media you see i mean it's just yeah. it's just there's a lot right whether you like him or not there's a, it's, it's there's a lot against them so i don't know the conspiracy theorist to me is like yeah they'll find a way to to stop it or to make it so that well it have they happen. have they overturned these crazy states that have like took him off the ballot and also with with biden you'd see like the reaction on the right like taking him off the ballot on like some like that like is that how how is that that obviously it's unconstitutional? Like, it is, but does it even matter if it's a state that he wouldn't win anyways? 
I mean, that's see, typically that, that's, what's happening. It's yeah, like it's, California is taking Trump. Uh, it's Trump like, who cares? It's yeah, like, but then that's the, then it's just like, well, it's rigged, you know, like th at that point, right? I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm not arguing like whether They're I think it's- They're playing a stupid game. It's, it, it is stupid They're to so me. Dumb. It's irrelevant. If, if the states that he would get his ass kicked in no matter what, pull him off the ballot, then who gives yeah. a fuck? Yeah. It's like it's all just a ga it's all just a game. Like yeah. it's like who cares at that point? Like it would be different if there were like swing states that were happening or conservative states that were doing that. Which that's not going to happen. They're no. not going to pull them off of that, right? No, so, yeah. so it's like these states that are like super blue that are doing it. It's like okay, so what? You're making a statement, but what? What's There's no, I just find it ironic, I guess, because it's like you know you want to manipulate the way that people are allowed to vote, and then you're you're trying to like come down on anybody that says that. You know, there was some fraud in the election. You know, I mean, I would be pissed if I was in that it. state. That would bother me if I was in that state, yeah. right? Imagine being in that state and actually wanting to vote. Wanting to vote. Well, you'd have to write them in. Like, that would be, that exactly. would piss you me. You can still write them in. Oh, you can't. Yeah, you can still write them in. Oh. They're just not there. For it's you just to not, check off. it's not a box for you. Now, yes. what would be crazy That's, is if they get more because of that. Yeah, well, how funny would that be if it bites them in the ass? Yeah. They go out of their way to try and keep them off. It would have been a blue state anyways. Yeah. Here's, here's and what, then people write it in because- Here's what annoys the shit out of me. It's the average, the average voter annoys the shit out of me. Sorry. Uh, but I, they, they annoy me because we continue to vote. We, we, we don't punish this dirty, disgusting game of politics that they continue to play. Yeah. I think, it, it, look, when the Republicans win, the Democrats say, oh, you guys cheated. And then, then the Democrats are the Republicans say, oh, you cheated. Right. It's this stupid game. We're going to impeach you game. We're going to do this game when you're in. And it's like, it, it just, all it does is it, it just sows the seeds of civil, dis, like, uh, you know, like crazy dysfunction. Mm-hmm. Um, voters, Me, I wish voters were like, hey, asshole, you're playing a disgusting game. I don't want you anywhere near this. I'm not going to vote for you. Yeah. I wish people would just this do that. Fair. But they're yeah. so easily swayed by this garbage. It just makes me so upset. Mean, meanwhile, they're getting lunch together. I mean, that's what's really yeah, Oh, yeah, course. dude. Yeah, behind closed doors. Or, yeah. They're all, uh, you know, I mean, what are they doing? It's the Pepsi What are they doing behind closed doors, Justin? <laughs> yeah. talking, <laughs> talking to aliens? They're all wearing yeah. robes. <laughs> <laughs> You know, doing chants and, and drinking blood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> drinking blood. And, we won. Uh, oh, <laughs> I won. No, we won. That's so. What I was do. searching for from you is like, are we going to see like like a spaceship landing? Oh uh, yeah. Like that's what I think. Well, actually, oh, who was did, it that, you, did you just tell me this about the lasers? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So they've they've had laser technology for a long time that they can shoot up into the sky. So this. To make kind it look of like proves the fact that yeah, some of these UFOs were just um, basically holograms that they're like projecting to see uh, if they could trick people. To in see the if they could trick, and obviously it worked. So I love who was it? Was it you, Adam, that brought up that that somebody said the reason why we're seeing more UFO stuff is to drum up more funding for space force? Yeah, yeah, yeah. to I cause that. fear. Yeah, that yeah. is the that's the most yeah yeah plausible logical yeah. right because yeah. now you're you're you need you're, a threat yeah you got to go into to congress and ask for money you know from the taxpayers well because there's this this ultimate threat i mean what's a, more of an ultimate threat than alien invasion well and people <laughs> are over the war the welfare all those things so it's like we need another big big old money hole thing that we can just keep pouring money into that makes the most sense to me totally yeah. makes oh. sense to me and how smart is it to create all this stuff around it because then people who is and right now it's like okay, this is great. This isn't like a country. We're not killing other people. These are aliens, and we do want to protect ourselves from these aliens. Who's against building a, a, an army to protect ourselves from aliens? This makes a lot of sense. Like, not a lot of people are going to push back against that. Just like we probably were 60, 70 years ago with war with other countries. Oh, yeah. That's how it will be now with aliens, because now we've all agreed that we're like, okay, we're all one Nothing as, as would a human unify, race. Oh, yeah, it'll yes. unify us the most. Like Nothing would unify people under a massive government. And like Jesus, an man, <laughs> building spaceships, real easy to hide billions of dollars. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> kind of hard. Kind of hard for a plane or a tank Those these days. Those are expensive. But, yeah, <laughs> spaceships are really expensive. <laughs> Space bases? Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. expensive. You get aircraft carriers. Gas? To go in gas? To get all the way out to space, yeah. really expensive. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got a, we gotta a lot build, of engineering. We got to build a base on Mars, guys. Yes. Uh, how much does that cost? A few hundred trillion. Hundred <laughs> percent. This is the direction we're going. I feel like that's so that's so obvious to me that that oh. we're going to go that way, and it makes total sense to all these crazy showings and to eat like partially tell the story at these gov these hearings and yeah. stuff like that. It's like and everything's n n no no real facts. No one's dragging a body. Oh. No one's got a real proof or footage no. it's just a bunch of hearsay bullshit or fucking uh, you know, hol holograms to make you oh. think and just 
Here it comes, yeah, you dude. Got, you just got to keep the deception alive. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're fighting left and right, and both of them agreed that well, whoever gets elected, that the first big watch you watch first. Yes, when you know the first big bill that gets passed is like a oh, that's the, know, the trillion the, dollars listen, for our our first space, our first spaceship you know, defense. You know how everybody's always <laughs> satellite like, defense. Everybody's always like they should just get along so they can get things done. When they get along, there's when you got to be like, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, no, yeah, 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 the they're getting shit done. That's yeah, not good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did that bill pass so quickly? Oh, God. Anyway, so hey, I was looking up some random uh, strength facts. Uh, don't ask me why, but uh, <laughs> I looked up a gorilla. See how strong they are? Yeah. Do you know how much a gorilla could deadlift? Just a regular old gorilla? Oh, <laughs> they know? actually put it to the test? They just estimate how much oh, they could. I you know what, see a gorilla you know deadlift. You, you know how much they could deadlift? Just a, just a run-of-the-mill Gorilla I mean, I would, gu I would guess they would be pounds. able to easily do a thousand pounds plus. 1,800 pounds. 1,800 yeah. pounds. <laughs> yeah. Bro, they don't even lift weights. <laughs> That'd be and so they're vegans. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Are they though? Because I, I had a theory that, um, they that eat mo meat. most of these like ve like vegetarian they're animals are not vegetarian completely. No, they're not. Because they'll even they've sure shown that like deer, for instance, like they'll eat birds they'll eat rodents yeah. like really I didn't yeah know that. yeah because i mean they're opportunists like if especially if it's like you know something that's on the ground and they'll just eat it yeah. uh, because th their body still needs protein they still need amino acids they still need fat. yeah but their bodies break down uh plant sources pretty damn well and they have different you know digestive systems i think yeah and i think evolutionarily they've yeah. trained but, themselves to, to to eat like specific but plants go but but gorillas are just insane yeah they're not considered yeah. carnivores but they may consume meat they're like omnivores in zoos so they're omnivores yeah they consume leaves, stems, bark, flowers, and fruits. Occasionally, tiny vertebrae. It is. It is interesting exactly. that their that their there's no real vegetarian that their systems point. though have been able to 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 live off of mostly plants and then to be able to hang on to that much muscle mass, considering how supposedly close they are. It's not to us, true for all animals. And we can't hang yes. on to muscle mass like that. No, though. it's not true for all animals. Are different. Put a lion on a vegan diet, they'll die. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. It's, you know. I know. I why it's interesting is because they're so so much closer related yeah. to us than any other than a lion. You're yeah. much closer to that. Chimps than you. closer to us. Chimps right. and chimps are uh, they they'll eat each other. Other. Yeah, chimps are crazy. They're considered omnivore, also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah there's boy, monkeys are strong, bro. They are. They, <laughs> remember that there was that one. You see that shaved chimp? Yeah, they like actually shaved. Have you the seen hair that one with no hair? Jack. No. Have you seen it? Uh -uh. Bro, uh -uh. Uh -uh. look up like shaved freaking. chimp. I'm scared. Really? I'm scared to see what comes <laughs> up. <laughs> 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 I'm scared to see what <laughs> images pop up. <laughs> yeah, what kind of website? Uh, I wonder if it's gonna <laughs> shape .com, Doug, shape can you go to that? Yeah. Look at the, uh, watch this when it comes up here. Yeah, oh, dude. Oh, shit. Yeah, bro. They look like they're just. Oh, it's scary, dude. He's they're like just jacked, dude. Mean like that. looking, dude. But, I mean, they'll. That's like, a chimp on the top left over there? Yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah. You know, a, ch a chimp, and a chimp is not huge, right? How, how heavy is a chimp? What are they like? One hundred and sixty pounds, one hundred ninety. I mean, yeah, they're not like know. a gorilla is huge. Yeah, a yeah. chimp is not huge. If a chimp wanted to, it could grab you and then grab your arm. Not like and, and pull, no, pull it off. Oh, you yeah. could pull your arm yeah, off your body. Limbs and male your chimp face is off. between eighty eight and one hundred thirty pounds. So a freaking ninety pound wow. chimp could take your leg and probably pull it off your body and throw it. Yeah, it's pure fast twitch muscle. It's a uh, yeah, ready to, to shred you. There was this one game show. It might have been a Japanese game show. I'm only saying that because <laughs> Japanese game shows are the crazy. best. Yeah, they're, they're the, the best. best. Yeah, they, they come up with the best ideas. They're amazing. There was one where it was like human versus animal. And there was this like 90 pound chimp and he was playing tug of war with uh, like a sumo wrestler and a bodybuilder and whatever. Oh, wow. And they were on the other end and they were just like, ah, and the chimp was just like, it looked like he was just kind of resting. Yeah. And then the, his, his handler was telling him to pull and he'd like, pull. Like he was like doing nothing and just people were flying. From. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah dude. be really cool. You come up with the best ideas. I know, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best game show ever. Hey, oh, Adam, I want to ask you. What's up? I've been reading about. So, Intera is uh, one of our partners. They have skincare products that are peptide based, and one of the main peptides in the skincare products is called GHKCU, which is just this really remarkable peptide. It's considered the best uh, anti-aging uh, peptide that exists. It's remarkable when you read about it. And by yeah. the way, you could really tell uh, when you use it. I mean, I mean, you could tell within three applications. It's just, it, you could feel your skin tighten and, and all that stuff. So it boosts the production of collagen. It also works on elastin. And uh, apparently when people inject GHK, 
It helps with their bladder, with people who have issues with bladder. Now, you have a small bladder. Huh. You always got to pee every five seconds. Yeah, yeah. Uh. Have you noticed any difference? By, because you, you use topical GHK, but then I know you're using the, the injectable. I did, but I've gone through my injectable. So it'd be like, I, now you're making me like trying to think back. Like if I noticed that I went through a little phase there where I was getting up less times in the night and I can't, because I only, I only had about a month of that injectable. So mm -hmm. I already went through the injectable uh, you know, cycle of it. Mm -hmm. All, I use the topical daily though. So the topical I rub like the, uh, they told me to rub it on my psoriasis. So I use mm. it. So I use Intera for my face and then I use my, my other stuff for the psoriasis, which is all, all of it's the GHK CU base. Mm. So they both have that. I use the transcend one for my psoriasis and then I use the Intera one uh, for my face. Yeah. So they have, so on the study. Well, it will, so what, will, it, will I still get it? I mean, I imagine it's getting into my, is it getting into my bloodstream? No, it's is more it, local. More it, local. It is local. Yeah, it, doesn't more local. Get, it doesn't penetrate. Yeah. If you rub it on your skin, it's on your skin. That's not You'll getting. get some systemically, but not like injecting. But there are reviews of human, human clinical trials. Topical GHKCU creams um, outperformed uh, vitamin C products, vitamin K products, retinol products. Uh, Matrix, uh, Matrixel 3000. These are all like like well known ways to improve the appearance of your skin. It literally it, it killed them all. It crushed them. Mm -hmm. It's also good against UV radiation and damage. So if you get a sunburn, put this on and it'll heal your skin. Pretty interesting stuff. I, I mean, mean I, I know it's not like a a a, a cheap like uh, you know a stack, but the Caldera stack with the Intera is like the, to me like the gold standard. Oh, of like, dude. I'm using the peptide GHCKCU for yeah. my face, and then I use the Caldera afterwards. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And then I use the Caldera serum, yep. and then the base layer, and it's like those things I feel like have made a big difference. Oh, I, yeah. Katrina's been on it now for a while too, because she, I mean, she noticed a huge difference. It's also too. good for for um, wounds, scars, and injuries. <clears throat> That's so. why they have it on my psoriasis. Yep. So yeah, they've used it on my. Uh, they have me use it on my psoriasis, and I, mm. I can totally tell there was. Speaking of weird stuff, you know what I just learned about that's been around for over a hundred years that is just starting to make its way on social media. <laughs> Have you guys seen posts of people sticking their tongue out and it's all blue and they're like, oh, I'm using XX, whatever. Okay. It's something called methylene blue. Have you guys ever heard of this before? I thought I heard uh, you say something about it. Because I brought it up. It, I brought yeah. it up off air and I was talking to Doug about it. So methylene blue. and it, It's I, been around for a long time. A long time. Like over a hundred years. It's it was a it was a dye product, but it resembles they vitamin just C. Like in otter, otter pops or <laughs> no? no. Okay. Was I doing no? <laughs> no, I don't think they use methylene blue in otter pops. No, no otter pop. But uh, but yeah, what's so, it for? Uh, so it it helps your mitochondria, really boosts energy production of mitochondria. And you know so what? I'm reading people are saying the craziest shit online. Okay, so like I know it this fixed I know this my brain a... fog. It did this. It did that. What what doesn't help your mitochondria? Oh, <laughs> I just got to call that. I, I mean, <laughs> poor diet. Toxins. Yeah. Okay. So then does the opposite, does good sleep help your mitochondria? Does the sun help your mitochondria? Yes, sure. but, does, that's all, could, but that's all, but that's not going to help. strength up, training so work your health. mitochondria? But that's a, not above and beyond what it would normally do. So like, yes, exercise and diet. So then you should attach that, that statement when you say stuff, because then when you, because I feel like yeah, it's getting to a point yeah. where we're like, and we're, we have products, right? Juve is example. Yeah. Mitochondria standard. is like, the, which is so funny because it was know. like the word I always used to throw in there. <laughs> it's how I used to make fun of me. I'm going to say this word to sound smart real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Mitochondria. Yeah. How yeah. mitochondrial health is affected in external influencer for your mitochondria can be compromised by oxidative, oxidative stress. stress. So it's a redox chemical is okay. methylene blue, meaning that it helps with oxidative stress. And people are talking about it for like all kinds of crazy shit. The brain function, fatigue, gut health. Now I know this is social media land. Yeah. But what was interesting to me is that this has been around for so long. I thought it was this new thing. And I looked it up. I feel like, like everything that comes out, we should have to have like, um, we should have to have Sleep, diet, exercise. First, yeah, like like th like this, right? Like put up on a chart, and then anything and everything that comes out, yeah, peptides, juvelides, hormones, even everything, yeah, should have to be put next to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like to show the difference. Yes, to show that. So because what I think happens for because it's, like, it's like a, it's like a uh, remember when you were a kid and you got your first car because you you know you didn't make any money. All of us didn't make any money. So yeah. the first thing you did, what'd you do? Put a cane in an air filter. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Spoiler on it. Right yeah. there. Ooh, I'm going to put an air filter yeah, so it's yeah, faster. Yeah. Got a whole yeah. four more yeah. horsepower yeah. out of yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> about 130. You know what yeah, I'm saying? <laughs> That's what I'm, I mean. So 
To, and, and just to put it in perspective for everybody, because we get inundated with all this great new science and these cool studies yeah. and all these great peptides and hormones and all this cool stuff. And it's just like, meanwhile, we're fucking sleeping with our phones yeah. on our face yeah. till midnight, one in the morning. We're scrolling like crazy, listen, comparing ourselves listen, to other people. So are listen, they eating this? Like, what is Yeah, it? you eat it. You eat it. it, uh, it a, a, by the way, Adam, you're ruining this sorry, whole like fun with weird know, chemicals. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm side sorry. of the, uh, sorry. you know, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot Sound of people. gets excited by new stuff. I know. Th yes. Even though I just, a lot someone of... has to be the balance of that. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. someone there's has to be a lot of the... fanatics. Know. Know. Hey, we're not selling methylene blue. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. We don't have a product. That's why I feel okay about shit all over it. Shit all over it. So, hey, by the way, by the way, Ben Greenfield, I messaged him because he's like, of course. What did he say? Stick it up your ass. Oh, no. No, he said, oh, he wrote a whole article on it. He did. I guarantee He did. A whole article. Yeah, yeah, and uh, because it's been around for so long, a lot of people use it. And I asked them, "Did you notice the difference?" He goes, "Yeah, I noticed some improvements in, in you know, like brain fog and stuff like that." But then I read, I read his article. I don't know what Ben. Why does Ben always put everything as a suppository? Why does everything have to go up his butt? <laughs> like he talks about the different ways he it's uses his preferred method. Yeah, and then boom, suppositories in there as well. Like, bro, come on, Ben. Why everything? <laughs> why is he gonna do that? Maybe he's he's hacked into something we don't know about. You know what I'm saying? How to go viral? How Just to go viral? Quicker Stick in the bloodstream that way. <laughs> have you, you guys used creatine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever put it up your up butt? Up your ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, no. we've always said, and I still nope. stand by this. I mean, he is the guy who, and yeah. I, I know he gets a lot of hate from people. You know what is about what is weird about Ben when we see him? Do you ever notice how young he looks? He, no, he's got incredible in real in person. If you meet Ben, he his, looks he looks really young for his age. And he has a, yeah. so what's interesting too is that he has he has like gorilla hands that has these big fat calloused fingers. Yeah. So he just, you could tell he just does he climb shit. Yeah, climb shit all day long outside, and it's all calloused, dirty. It looks like he hasn't cleaned his nails in like ten years. <laughs> But then he has like this gorgeous <laughs> face that looks like it's like yeah, perfect like, skin like, and perfect hair. He just hair. came out of a spa. Like, yeah, yeah like he just yeah, came yeah. from a spa. Like, so it's like, and you know, not, he's he, outside in the he elements. He knocked the cucumbers off his eyes. Yeah. It, just, it, oh, so it's this guys. interesting contrast. Well, you right? know, he's out in the sun. He's out in the snow. Yeah, yeah. He's always outside. His face should look wet. Would you say, okay, of all yeah. of our healthy friends in the space, yeah. would you say he looks the healthiest? Would you oh. say he's the healthiest? Actually, I would make that case. Uh, I don't know. He's who, so extreme. Who would you challenge? Who would you there? Yeah. Who would you? Okay. Of our friends. Oh, that's a good okay, question. We have a lot of health and fitness nuts. Yeah. Who comes close to him to looking that way? No, no. That's just, that's, who would you say is as healthy or healthier than Ben? Paul Check. Ooh, yeah, okay. Paul Check for sure. Paul Check's gonna be more balanced. Yeah. Paul I mean, Check's he's just balanced. as fucking weird. Oh, no, no, hold on. I didn't say weird. He's, he's, he's more balanced. I, mean, That's I guarantee he's stuff, he probably stuck just as much shit hey. on his ass, too. <laughs> I love you, Paul. Hey, so if you Paul, this, hey, Paul, I think like, if Paul and Ben, yeah, yeah, sure. hey, if, if Paul and Ben had Paul's a... like, hell no, just a he Tom. That's the only that's ever been in Oh, oh <laughs> Come on, Adam. Oh. I guarantee Paul would say that. No, listen, listen. Oh, my God. Paul versus Ben in a weird off. Who wins? In a weird off? Yeah, it's a weird off. Who wins? That's tough. Ben and stuff that he does, Paul and the things he talks about. I bet you Paul's um, done some. Paul's I don't done know, dude. I think Paul. <laughs> okay, so let's. So that's a good. I, I would. Paul has I, two wives. I would agree. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I would agree. I would agree. Paul, is, you have something to say, Doug? No, I'm just fixing okay. my light. Do you have, light. So he I, wants to make sure. I thought you had to be able to jump in. You know, <laughs> <laughs> shut this down if I. No, have no. To. I'm, this is actually. I've, I thought about this before, and I've actually wanted to talk to the guys about this because we have so many friends that yeah. are in the health space, yeah. and there's definitely a wide spectrum of like what I consider. They're like, all weird, though. You know, like. Most of our friends in space. Yeah. Like yeah. Every, every one of them. You yeah. Know? Like, are we, we weird? Huh? <laughs> we're, 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 we're weird. Are we weird? I, I'm pretty sure. No yeah. way, dude. We're the cool kids. 100%. Yeah. But at least I am. But yeah. We, I, mean, it's, I can't speak for you guys. I mean, You're hella yeah, we're weird. We're the cool kids, but. You're super weird. Okay, who's next? You you sit down to pee. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, which exactly. I bro, I'm starting a revolution. I know you are. Way. You're selling that it peanut so butter hard. jelly, dog. Yeah, you, it's peanut like I'm changing people's first. lives in the peanut dishwasher. Peanut butter first, sit 100%. down on the toilet. Wait till I write my book. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be that'd be a new man. Nothing yeah. to do with fitness. Yeah. Right. Toilet okay, toilet who's, toilet next? Toilet who's next? Who's next? Who's next? We got we got Paul and Ben, arguably one and two. I think that's. I don't think anybody could disagree with that. Yeah. Who comes next? You know who's weird that you wouldn't think is weird, but when you get to know him, you're like, you're fucking weird, bro. Who? Mike Matthews. Yeah. He would also be out there and healthy for me, and he's a different type of healthy because he's like a little more. He's too stressed, bro. No way. No way. Mike Matthews. Dude, yes, bro. He's a stress machine. He's not stressed. Yes, he is. You are way more stressed than he is. I didn't say. I'm not comparing anybody against myself. Well, in the context of stress, Mike is stressed, bro. He's not. 
Mike is okay. Mike is Mr. Conspiracy Theory with you guys, and like, oh, like over the top of that. But he has a different attitude about it. He has like he has a, a comedic approach to it. Yeah, like he like laughs at it. It's like I ridiculous. No, man, he was just he talks about he can't sleep and all that stuff. I think he's yeah, oh yeah, really? Oh yeah. Well, he's not told me that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay, so he's but we, then then you can't put he's him. Weird, we're, we're talking about healthy. Yeah. Oh, healthy. Yeah, yeah. Who are our healthiest people for sure? Oh. I think Paul and Ben are one and two. Doctor Cabral. I th I'd put him up there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, you know what? He could arguably pass one of those. Well, maybe two weirdos. I mean, he works so hard. You know that might take away a little bit, right? Uh, Cabral is pretty. He's like workaholic. Right. He only has white shirts too. That's it. It's like, <laughs> that's <why he's> <laughs> Did you ever notice that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I've met Cabral at least twenty times. Yeah. I've yeah. only seen him in a he white has a button closet shirt. just of all white shirts. Yeah. He does. Yeah. yeah, he really does. Yeah, that's that's got to be unhealthy. No, that's gotta, I don't know. <laughs> there's, there's, some, there's something unhealthy. Simplicity. About. You know, like he's just he, he cuts out all Listen, the options. That was a good. That was a good one though. Yeah, that was a good one to add. That, I think Cabral would be up there with with probably one of our healthiest yeah, friends yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. we might be weird too, though. That's I all I'm saying. pretty sure we're that's, up there. That's all I'm trying to say yeah. right now. In different, yeah, degrees. Well, yeah. Not, I, this wasn't supposed to go. I mean, we went weird with the, those guys. I was more curious of like ranking our our super. Just the thing about how ben about this? Like, how many people, without throwing people under the bus, I feel like there's a lot of people in the health and fitness space that are are way more unhealthy than people realize. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. That are like riddled with stress. Yeah. That overdo Everything. stuff, overdo their training, yeah. overdo their dieting. Yeah. Well, that's like, why I was trying to think of some, and then I'd be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> yeah not that yeah, person. Maybe not, not that person. Maybe yeah. not that person. There's a lot like that, bro. I mean, you're, you're going to find more. I mean, we've said this so many times. You'll find more dysfunction it's, in our space than you will in others. You know, and, and part of it too is just society, right? Because we, we, we are just off air. We were watching um, David Goggins' story, right? Yeah. And, we tend to, as a society, uh, glorify the the extremes. Yeah, I mean, and he's he had a terrible childhood. Oh, yeah, and he's obviously found a way to cope, and yes. the way he copes is with dysfunction through exercise and discipline and all that stuff. Yeah, and people are like, "Ooh, I wish I could be like that." No, you don't. Yeah, you no, don't want to wish you could be like that. That's turmoil. Yeah, that is a lot of turmoil on the yeah, inside. Yeah. yeah, no way. And I think that's what happens to a lot of. I think a lot of people is that they. They have found a way to overcome this trauma or this crazy thing, yeah. and they have turned it into a, a superpower. Better than being an alcoholic. Yeah, no, right? yeah, yeah. yeah, no. I, I, but I think that's what happens, though. And then we then we put them on a pedestal as like they're the mm -hmm. the epitome of health, or that this is what we should aspire to be like. Not really understanding the the mechanisms that have that caused them to be this way. Yeah, and they, and don't they might not even be happy. Yeah, you know, sometimes you look at these high producers and you're like, oh wow, that's awesome. What is it, Elon? Wasn't Elon on an interview? And, they, and I don't remember, was it Joe Rogan? He's like, so is, is it hard to be you? Or what? And you could tell he was like fighting back tears. He's like, he's, he's tormented. Yeah. And that's why he creates and works so hard. He's tormented. Yeah. He just has all these ideas. He feels like he has to birth them all out you yeah. know, while he's here. Oh, yeah. crazy. Hey, uh, NCI is doing something. I, and we need to mention this in today's episode. Doug, can you bring that up? They have a plug and play so what they're calling is a plug and play system that every coach needs. So uh, this is a coach's toolkit. And I believe, are they offering this to people who go on the link, Doug? Is that what's it's going free. on? That's it's it. Free. Yeah. They go to the link and it's free. Okay. So what it's what, what it you need to it? generate leads, what you yeah. need to turn those leads into playing clients, how to onboard those clients. It's a toolkit that you can get for free by going to uh, the link that we're going to provide. What is that? NCIMindPump.com forward slash toolkit 2024. Wanted to say that because that's a pretty since you cool brought offer. up NCI, we should also mention to everybody that we we're in Florida, right? In April, yes, April, April. We're there for the coaching. Club. Oh yeah, that'll mm -hmm. be a good time. Yeah, yeah. So we're there for that, and we're in Arnold. So we got Arnold coming up first. Arnold is what in February? No, March, March, March. <laughs> March. I'm sorry, March. we're in February right now. March, yes. March first through the second. So God, got, it's around the corner. Huh? Yeah, I know. yeah, no, that's up. like here. So if you're planning on going to Arnold, we and we are going to do a meet and greet. So we're, where, when, exactly what day or what that, we will be there. Stay we will do a meet and greet. So where is that going to be, by the way? Are we Ohio? In, it's Ohio always. Yeah, huh? Isn't it always? Ohio. I believe so, yes. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. You know, Cleveland. I went to the Arnold once and it was there. And then I went to the Arnold and then I went outside the Arnold to try and see what else there is to do. And there's nothing. nothing. There's nothing on Ohio. Yeah. Nothing. It's, it's Ohio, dude. Yeah. yeah. That was one of our best live events, though. You know that? Yeah. 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 It was one of our best live events. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. really liked that, that live. It was uh, unfortunate that happened right when COVID did. And we didn't get a chance to do the event because I'd never been to Arnold. Mm hmm. I've only been to Olympia, so mm -hmm. I haven't been. And everyone says that's like, right. Arnold we is, went out there for that event, yeah. And everybody was scared of COVID, and we, we still came back, F and I got hella sick. Yeah, and and but it wasn't COVID. Yeah, 
At least I thought maybe I was. I don't know. Yeah. But we were we got sick. Doug mm-hmm. got sick first. Gave it to me. I got everybody got sick. Mm. Yeah, I don't remember that. You gave yep. it to me, Doug. I did. Okay. Yeah, you did. Mm. Wow. You always mm. do. Mm. I didn't know that. Yes. <laughs> We got a uh, shout out. Uh, a, a different shout out today. It's been a while since we shouted out a show. I found uh, a show. I think Doug's already seen it, um, and I forget what it, I want to say. I, I found it on Apple, but it might be like connected to Peacock or one of those other ones like that. I know I can pay for it through Apple. Uh, Slow horses. It's good. Mm. You guys would like it. Both of you guys would like it. Slow horses. Yeah. It's uh. What is is it? Mi four is the the British version. Mi five or Mi five yeah. the mm-hmm. British version of the Secret CIA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, isn't that what it is? Yeah, okay, yeah. so it's like basically that. It, what's interesting or what I'm enjoying about it, like I've, I've already gone through almost the first season. I think there's three seasons of it right now. Is you can't help but think of like all the political games that are played in the United mm. States. Like it's worldwide. This stuff happens all over. Like sounds this, good. Yeah. So you got, you guys would like it. It's right. good acting, good storyline to it. Um, really enjoying it. So check it Sweet. out. One of my favorite protein powders is made by a company called paleo Valley. It is a collagen based bone broth protein that tastes amazing. In fact, their chocolate protein is the best tasting protein powder I've ever had in my life. It's also extremely unprocessed, meaning it doesn't have a bunch of stuff in it. It's all natural, very easy to digest. I can't handle dairy. Plant-based proteins are okay, but if I have too many of them, I also start to get gastro distress. Well, Paleo Valley's bone broth protein, I can have all day long and digest very easily. Anyway, go check it out. Go to paleovalley.com forward slash mind pump, and that link will give you an automatic 15% off your first order. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Clint from Illinois. What's happening, Clint? How come What's up, man? Hey, hey, good afternoon, gentlemen. Um, thanks for taking my question. This is the second time I've been on, so I feel like I kind of won the fitness lottery here, getting to talk to you guys <laughs> hey. twice. So oh, how'd that happen? We this is to, awesome. We got to talk um, to our assistant. People sliding, <laughs> slipping through. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, maybe my fault. Um, so um, this go around, I just want to say. Um, like I'm 39 turning 40. I've got six of your programs. So I've been following you guys for years. Uh, you guys are great. Um, I'm like some of the callers too, you know, don't have any of your programs after following you for years, which makes no <laughs> sense to me. Um, <laughs> Those are my favorite. So <laughs> yep, they're, they're mine too, in a very frustrating way. Um, so anyway, used to be big in a long, uh, long endurance events, um, have cut back dramatically. And so, like what my fitness routine now is from October through March, I use that time frame to kind of bulk up and do my strength training, which generally resolves around uh, anabolic, aesthetic, um, sometimes hit. Um, and I bought MAPS 15, which I haven't done yet. Um, and then when the summer hits, I like to get outside. So I'll do farmer carries, some rucking. I still run three to four times a week uh, when I can. Um, but one thing that I've found is that I still kind of lack that feel good hormones I get from running. And so what I like to do occasionally is do a dip in the cold plunge because I feel like I can get in that for three minutes and I get the same after effect as it would if I went out for a five or six mile run. But I've been hearing through various sources like Andrew Humerman and other people that it can blunt the effect of muscle growth. And so Huberman says to do it four hours after a session, at least there's other people out there like the dude from Renaissance periodization that says like, maybe don't do it at all. I figured you guys would be a good middle ground to see what your thoughts are. And if I am doing it, like if I'm running anabolic, should I be doing this during my, on my trigger session days or later in the day after my workout? Um, like right now I'm on week three of, um, uh, aesthetic, like maybe not doing it all since the focus sessions are a little bit more intense. And like with turning 40, you know, I want to maximize my gains and I don't want to like blunt anything with being older. It's like right now, since October to current, I've put on about 22 pounds and I'm feeling good. So just wanted to get your advice on when I should do it or if not at all and the timing of it. This is a good question. Here, here's why I like this question so much, Clint, because it highlights the What's idiocracy. Yeah, it, <laughs> it highlights the idiocracy in uh, the health and fitness space. So so I'll give you another example. Okay. If you look at a ketogenic diet, um, and you look at the mechanisms of uh, energy production through that, what you'll find is higher rates of fat oxidation, right? Cause you're not eating carbohydrates. So your body's using fat and turning it into ketones. So then what people would do is they would deduce from that and say, you burn more body fat. 
on a, keto, on a ketogenic diet. Now, later on, they did studies where they actually looked at fat loss, not just fat oxidation. And what they found was it doesn't result in more fat loss. It's the calorie deficit that makes a difference. If anything, protein has more of an influence on fat loss just through the muscle building process. All right, why am I saying this? When you do a cold dip um, or an ice bath, what they're looking at are markers of inflammation that have also been shown to signal muscle growth. What we have yet to see is a study that actually looks at the end of a 18-week, 24-week, 36-week, whatever study to show, okay, this group ice bath, this group didn't, who built more muscle? All we see are these markers that are changing. Um, now, even with the markers that are affected, you're looking at a, a nominal, nominal effect. I would, I would bet you that if we compared two groups of people, one ice bath, one didn't, the benefits of the ice bath, so long as all other things are controlled and good and everybody's healthy, would outweigh the, the negatives and you would probably see no difference in muscle growth because although you might have a blunted signal, um, that, you know, a slightly blunted signal, what you'll also find is the ability to train harder, more frequently, increase volume, et cetera. So I, here's the best time to do your ice bath whenever you want. Uh, it's not going to, it's not going to affect your progress at all. You are finding benefit from it, uh, mental benefits, which I think are the benefits that we need to focus on. Like I feel good. I feel energized. That's why I do it. And, and, and I think that's great. I think just do it whenever you want. I don't I, think there's a wrong time to do it. I, I definitely don't think there's a wrong time to do it. I do think there is a more optimal, which would be pre-workout. I think as a pre-workout, uh, it's incredible. Yeah, I mean, if you haven't done an ice bath right before you get into a lift, it's actually one of my favorite feelings ever. You get this massive adrenaline rush. Uh, I feel like I can get right into my lift, and I feel amazing uh, afterwards. Uh, but to Sal's point, like it's such a splitting hair difference on you know your gains and <clears throat> building muscle, and you have to ask yourself like what are, what are the cognitive benefits and just also the mental benefits of doing hard things and overcoming that that you get from that. So it's not as as simple as like oh doing right. this is you're going to build a little bit less muscle this way. It's like there's a compounding effect of doing hard shit when you don't want to do it. And there's also that, also the mental benefits of, okay, how much more productive are you throughout the rest of your day? And are you a better father? And do you, I mean, it's like, there's so many other things that it, it could be carrying over to that isn't just specific to building muscle. And the the stuff that, the, the studies that show that it, it blunts some of that, it's so, so small. It's not, it's not even worth having a debate over. But of course, because we live in this, social media world where, you know, you, this type of stuff, you know, you know why it's making its rounds of the negative stuff is because it blew up and got so popular. And so now it'll become popular to, to send the counter message of why it's so bad. You'll get more right. hits on social media. Yeah. yeah and they're going to highlight that just because it's, it's clickbait and it's stuff that like people want to like argue and debate about. Uh, but really, are you really that consistent in terms of like, um, it, if you were to incorporate that on days that you work out, was would this be just as consistent as your workouts? I guess is is my question because, you know, in, in terms of like how you structure that, um, it, I, I I would honestly like probably go probably later beyond your workout in in terms of letting that, um, you know, allowing your your body to 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 have that natural bit of inflammation, but then you know towards the end of the day, you know maybe apply it then or do the pre before the workout, honestly, it's not going to make like a huge difference. So, so really it's like, to Sal's point, it's kind of like really up to you in terms of like how often you apply it. Yeah. And I was only doing it, you know, three times a week, four times at most. And, you know, like, I, you know, the whole inflammation bit, like I'm pretty against NSAIDs as a whole. And so the cold therapy, I was like, well, I hopefully it's not like hitting, no. like, you know, taking, you know, Tylenol and, you know, Motrin and stuff. And, Known to the point where it's, it's kind of keeping me off of that chronic cardio bandwagon. The fact that I can do this and have that same effect, it's made that uh, that it's lessened that addiction to have to go out and pound the pavement. That, I mean, that yeah, makes that yeah. makes it worth it by itself, there right there. Go. Yeah, right. That that alone right. is is enough of a, a reason. If you are a client of mine, I'd say, yeah, let's keep doing it. And I really don't give a shit when you do it. Look, I want you to do it whenever it's most convenient for you. Now, in a perfect world, you could do it before we work out, but I don't. I don't as a if, as if you were my client, I wouldn't give a shit if you told me that right there, that you get that kind of benefit from it. That's enough to cancel, cancel out the, the bullshit that's yeah. out there on the negatives. Look, Clint, to put it differently, you know, um, 
it, it does make you feel better. It does reduce inflammation. Now, we act like those things uh, happen in a vacuum in uh, in regards to our behaviors. It doesn't, right? If you reduce inflammation, you, you get those feel-good chemicals that are produced from the cold uh, bath, uh, it influences your behaviors. Well, what, what might that do for your behaviors? You might work out a little more. I, I mean, if you're a fitness fanatic, right. if you're a fitness fanatic, you're probably able to train more and not result in as much damage to the body, uh, which is probably going to offset any, uh, definitely would offset any potential negative muscle building, whatever. Uh, but people are make, putting so much focus on this. It's ridiculous. It's literally a complete waste of time. The only people I would tell to not cold, uh, do cold dips or cold baths are people whose stress bucket is so high that the additional stress from the cold. That was Doug. Well, yeah. Doug, it, got, Doug got recommended not to do it from Cabral. Right. Yeah. Like your cortisol is all over the place and you've got bad sleep and all that stuff. And I'd say, yeah, let's not, yeah. let's not have you do it. Um, but otherwise it's, it's totally fine. And the time of day, if it, as long as it doesn't interfere with sleep, like you probably don't want to do it right before bed or something like that. You're totally fine. Oh yeah. No. Yeah. Right. Awesome. No, yeah. thanks. That's great sound advice. And it's, you know, it's not one extreme or the other. So I, I greatly appreciate it. So yeah, I'll just, um, as soon as the temperature outside gets above, you know, 20 degrees, I'll be popping back outside and doing it. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Clint, are you in our forum? Uh, yeah. In the forum, I've got, um, uh, performance hit aesthetic anabolic anywhere 15. I mean, I've, I've run the gamut. You guys have been, it's been great programming. Um, I follow it to a T every time and I've seen nothing but great results and, um, like low to no injuries. So it's, uh, it's, it's been good. Now I do all of it from home. Um, I've got a squat rack and a awesome. bench press, so I'm, I'm missing some of the hamstring stuff, but other than that, it's, it's good. Now I, I, I see here that, uh, that you did maps anabolic and got your deadlift from 155 to 315. Wow. Damn. Yeah, and that was and that's because that's all the weight plates that I have right now. So it's <laughs> wow. Um that's awesome. Yeah. That's phenomenal. Yeah, so yeah. hey, can I send yeah, you yeah, great can I send you maps? And, can I send you maps prime pro, Clint, or something like that to kind of help with the you know, if you need any correctional exercise, you have that? Uh I don't. Yeah, that'd be I mean, that's great. I'm not looking to get anything, but if you want to send it my way, that'd no. be I would uh, greatly appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, we'll send it over. Okay. All right, yeah, man. thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate right. it. All you right. got it. Take it easy. Hey, and hey, stay safe out there in California. I heard you guys are getting some pretty nasty weather. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's it. nasty yeah. in the context of California. It's really, so not, it's not really that bad. Not crazy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Take thanks, it easy. Bud. All right. It, it, it is funny. I had I have some neighbors that are not from California, and they're like, "It's so funny how everybody just freaks out because it's windy." You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? like, Isn't that the like, news just yeah. over? Yeah. It. Ah! Like, no, it's not that bad. Like one tree fell, yeah. fell over. Yeah. Everybody's like freaking yeah, out. Everybody's over scared yeah, all that yeah. stuff. <laughs> but yeah, this this whole thing with the cold dip is it's you're, uh, you hit the nail on the head, Adam. It got so popular that yeah. then it became smart on social media to counter it. Yeah. Yes, and a great scary message is it blunts the muscle, muscle building signal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but I I bet you if they did a study. And looked at strength gains and muscle gains and compared both groups. I bet you it would be nominal. I mean, it also reminds me very. It's very similar to the you know the popularity of fasting, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and the benefits that are attached to that. It's like people uh, argue the wrong thing about it. Like talking about fasting and building muscle and stuff like that. It's like or losing body fat. It's like that's the wrong reason to even do that. The cold plunge, same thing. If you're cold plunging to try and get jacked, yeah. that's not the best reason to, well, to cold plunge is to get yeah. jacked. <laughs> I guess what I was trying to clumsily get to is like, nobody's that consistent with ice baths. <laughs> Let's be fucking honest. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. you, they can like purport that like, well, if I do it after this time and what, like, you're not going to do it that often. I'm going to yeah. be honest with you. Like, and Very if you do, and then, you know, maybe we can talk, but it's not even going to make that big an impact anyways. Well, and then what Sal said, it's like, and I don't even care if a study does come out and show that, oh, this group built more muscle. It's like, okay, well, did they follow you around and see if you were a better dad? and yeah. a better husband yeah. and that you were more productive at work or that you were more focused yeah. when you sat down all to that read. Factors in. Yeah. There's like all these other cascading effects that come from yep. the benefits of doing that. And it's like, even in an isolated study with two, two groups 
where one did ice bath every single day, one never did ice bath, who built more muscle. Even if it came back that the group with, that didn't do it built a little bit more muscle, it wouldn't be enough for me to tell people not to do it because no. it has other benefits, right. just like fasting. It's like I think if someone came out with a study, it showed, oh, the people that fasted didn't build as much muscle as the people that, it's like, that doesn't matter because that's not yeah. the reason why I'm encouraging people to do it. So it's Not so, everything you do has to do with building muscle right. and burning body fat. And yet, and the, to your point again, that, you know, you have to ask yourself too that, okay, so maybe it blunts the signal a little bit. You build, you know, a fraction less muscle, but because of that, you now can Add train volume. harder yeah. or train an extra day. You got better or technique. Add, you got better you, mental benefits. Yeah. yeah so, you know, so then you have to, you, how do you factor in the increased volume or intensity because you now are, That's right. so it's like, come on, dude. Our next caller is Dave from Oklahoma. Dave, what's up, man? What up, Dave? Hey, gentlemen. Thanks for taking my call. My, my question. I, um, I love what you guys do. I'm a, I'm a father and an entrepreneur as well. And so I always love it when you guys delve into those subjects. I get a lot from awesome. those conversations. So awesome. Hey, thanks. I'll jump right in. So I'm on uh, week eight of MAPS Powerlift. I've run aesthetic a couple times and symmetry and decided I really want to get good at those, those foundational lifts that you guys keep talking about and maybe set a couple more PRs before I get put out the pasture here. Um, <laughs> and so during that process, I actually started looking into like powerlifting competitions and meets and decided that it might be fun to give it a shot. And um, so I actually went to my first one a couple of weeks ago as a spectator and um, looked at some of the, the totals of what people are lifting and felt like I could potentially be competitive. Uh, but one of the things that I've learned that I'm doing wrong or uh, that I need some advice on is, um, especially on the bench, I have always been doing bench presses where I kind of stop at the parallel with my elbows. I've heard that that was like better for your shoulders or whatever. I don't know if that's right. Um, but they obviously have to touch your chest. And as I went back and I started benching that way, so my lift would actually count as a good lift according to the judges. I've, I've lost a lot of strength doing that, like 20 or 30 pounds on my bench, which is really, really frustrating. Just those couple inches matter, boys. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Um, and so I don't know if you had any suggestions or advice on things I could do to train that, that range of motion, just that lower range of motion. And um, any other like general advice that you'd have for someone that wants to compete in their first powerlifting competition at the age of 39. I got some really good yeah. news for you, Dave, about that. Uh, so I, I, I remember that this was one of the like biggest leaps I saw in like gains on my chest was when I, so our national certifications as trainers, when we were all, you know, in our early twenties, Sal teenager, when we took these actually recommended that clients only went down to 90 degrees and that's just for bending your elbow yeah that's for safety reasons right so this and that was this is one of the things that we talked about later on of like you know this is like not ideal ideally you take clients through full range of motion we were taught to to have them stop at 90 degrees so of course i trained that way myself for many years and i remember like learning that oh no i should go the full range and all the way down and like how much i had to reduce the weight but what's great, it's like it's almost like finding a new exercise when you haven't done that for most of your life. And even though you're weaker initially when you first start, the gains will come on fast if you stick to it. Just don't bail on it, right? A lot of guys will happen as a big, oh, fuck this. I'm way stronger going down to 90. I don't want to have to reduce the weight. If you throw that out the window and you actually do keep focusing on that, you'll watch your your strength come up and you'll see the development in your chest blow up more than you you have probably in a very long time in your life. Two, I guess two hacks that I, I had a similar issue for a bit, but uh, really focused on deep dips and then weighted dips uh, at the very okay. lowest position with I love, that, I love that and grinding my way out and then also overhead press uh, and starting in the rack position. So very much in the lower position with the bar. So not up here where, you know, the bodybuilder kind of elbows are. Uh, so all the way down and in and like keeping that shoulder packed and then pressing from that, um, from that angle, like both of those, you know, from, from a dead position there and grinding your way through and just keep adding, just keep at it and keep working on the strength there. It's going to help tremendously. I'll give you the two, uh, the two, exercises or modifications you could do that'll get this up the fastest. One is to pause your bench press at the chest. Okay. Very simple. Bring the bar down to your chest, touch your chest. Don't rest the bar on your chest, but keep everything tight. Hold it for three to four seconds and then press up. 
that'll get that is adding an isometric component in the portion of the rep that you're weakest, and that'll get your strength up very quickly in that bottom portion. Within a few months, you'll be up to your normal bench press uh, just from doing that alone. The other one is to do a press off the bottom pins. So you essentially get underneath a barbell that's set to your chest. You kind of have to shimmy yourself underneath it, get real tight, and then press it off the rack. So you don't have the opportunity of lowering the weight before pressing it. One word of caution is go much you lighter. Exploding? I'm sorry? Exploding? Or is it just... Is it an explosive press or is it just a normal press? Uh, you, you can work up to an explosive one, but start off very controlled because without lowering the weight, you're going to feel a lot looser at the bottom. You'll see when you try it. You don't have the the stretch reflex. You don't have the, the built-up energy from, from the negative portion of the rep. But you, if you get good at that, then you'll get real strong at the bottom. Yeah. Now, the irony of the you know certifications in those early days, they don't teach this anymore. Um, or, you know, that people say it's safer to stop at 90 degrees. The irony is that although the technique is easier, this is where they say the safety, it's safer because it's, it's safer in the sense that it's, it's easier to learn that way. But the irony is it actually increases your risk of injury down the line because what ends up happening is you end up getting strong in a shortened range of motion. And then the discrepancy between that range of motion and the deeper range of motion starts to get so big that if you ever have to move out of something deep, you have no stability and you injure yourself. So this is the this is the like the, the paradox of short range of motion. People go, oh, I do short range of motion because it doesn't hurt. They actually increase the risk of injury later on because they're actually so unfamiliar. There. They're unfamiliar outside this range of motion, and, and in fact, you can see people start to move in a very tight way yeah. as a result of it because the body tries to keep them in the range of motion that they train. So it's actually worse for you to not learn the technique and strengthen in those full range of motion. Yeah, so it's just going to take you some time to familiarize yourself with that um, that that range of motion at the bottom to, to be able to generate force there. So really spending that extra bit of time, like if he's talking about on the pins and like from the very bottom position, generating the force almost isometrically and then pressing <laughs> yep. uh, is going to help a lot. It's, it, you just have to train your body to be able to produce force. That's there. it. Okay. Well, I appreciate it, guys. I'm I'm kind of going through this journey solo, more or less, with with your programs and just trying to figure it out as I go. So, any advice is is awesome, and um, I appreciate you guys taking the time to talk to me. And Adam, if you ever want to watch good basketball, you should come to OKC. I'll take you to a game. Oh, hell yeah! Nice. I would love to do that. <laughs> we got places out there. Maybe I'll make an excuse to come travel out there sometime. And it's it's fun, man. Thank right you guys. Right on. All hey, right. stick All to right. it, though. Thanks, I'm telling Dave. you right now, this is some of the, uh, the best gains I ever had in my chest was when I yeah. switched from 90 down to that. And the two things that Justin suggested were two of the biggest things that made a difference for myself personally. So yeah. just, just work stick out, with man. that. You got it. I'll let you know how it goes. All right, Dave. All right, brother. Good luck. Yeah, they don't teach that anymore, the 90-degree type deal. At NSM, do they I don't, don't think so. Oh, I really? Hope not. I no. think they do. Uh, I don't see anybody they doing that anymore. Hmm. in the gyms. I don't see trainers training that way anymore. Um, maybe that's because they listen to Mind Pump. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> we, may, we may have influenced that a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, isn't it funny, though, because when I train like that, where I stopped at 90 in overhead press and the bench press, I had worse shoulder stability. Of course. I had more shoulder injury. Yeah, no, 100%. It causes so more harm than good. It causes far more harm than good to do it that way. Um, but and then, the, and then the isometric part, man, that that made my, my strength go up so quick and that's for any lift. For anybody watching this, yeah. if there's a part of the rep that you're doing where you're weak, if you just pause there for three, four seconds, you're going to have to go lighter to do so. But just every time you do a power, rep, you pause it. That's it. Yeah. Power lifters are great at that. Like yes. Being able to segment different uh, portions of the lift. Yes. Really, like focusing on that. It helps a lot. Our next caller is Julian from Tennessee. Julian, what's up? How can we help you? What's going on, guys? What what's up? up? What's, what's up, dude? What's up? All right. Uh, you want me to just read off my question first? Let's, yeah, do it. Let's do it. All right. All right. Uh, so I started my fitness journey in uh, September 2018. I was about 100 or 250 pounds. In about a year and a half, I was able to lose 50 pounds, uh, mostly by doing bro splits uh, six days a week while doing cardio three to five times a week and jujitsu four to six times a week. I wasn't really tracking back then, but when I was tracking, I'd hit about 130 grams of protein at about 2,300 calories. Then COVID hit. I gained all the way back, and then I started to hit the gym again in July 2021 uh, by doing six days a week split and doing jujitsu six days a week. I was not tracking, but I did start cutting out some certain foods and was intermittent fasting, which helped, but then I eventually hit a plateau 
about a year later in October of 2022, which is when I went, when I found you guys and started tracking again. And around that time, my wife found an online coach with first form, which did help me out. But around the third or fourth month with the coach, he started putting me on a pretty aggressive cut while suggesting fasted cardio in the morning, 10,000 steps a day, plus 20 minute hit sessions on non full body workout days. Uh, but after about three months, my mood and energy were being affected. So when I told him this, he said it was just my body adjusting and it would eventually go away, but never improved. And he didn't want to change my macros. So I dropped him, started doing a reverse diet in June of last year and went up all the way to 3,000 cal- 3, 3, calories. I've put on about 20 pounds on the scale, but my lifts have all gone up to deadlifting, 315, squatting 295, benching 225. And I was just wondering, um, the weight on the scale, is that normal? Uh, should I be on a cut? Uh, some people on the private forum were saying that I should be on the lock, uh, cut for longer than six weeks because I did do a cut down to 2,500 calories during the holidays. Um, and then do I do cardio? I'm walking 10,000 steps a day, uh, sometimes a little bit more uh, when it's nice out like today. But so should I do more cardio? Should I cut? Just needing some advice here, guys. All right. So what's the goal with the cardio? Why do more cardio? Why why what's wh- why would you want to do more of it? Is it because you enjoy it? It's something you really like to do? Or is it for the weight loss? Mostly for the weight loss. I really hate cardio. Okay, I'm kind of like fat Amy. Don't put me down for do cardio. It. The answer is no then. Thing. Now, with your history, Julie, I'm going to tell you right now uh, that you have a, a history of chronically overtraining. Like way overdoing it. So it's no surprise that you lost weight, gained it back, lost weight, gained it back a few times. So knowing that you have that tendency, I'm going to tell you, no, don't do any cardio. Stick to traditional strength training. If you want to go on a cut uh, at 2,500 calories, that's okay. That's not too low of calories. Although I'd like to see you stay in this kind of strength phase for a little longer just to get you out of that mindset. Um, You have a... um, How's your relationship with exercise and stuff now? Like, do you have that kind of a personality where you just tend to, you know, you're, you're all you're or nothing, all or nothing, or you're, 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 you feel like it's distracting you from something or what's the deal with it? Yeah. Yeah. I used to definitely be the chronic over trainer. I think just finding you guys really helped that. Um, I, I definitely like the maps anabolic style. Uh, I've done maps anabolic twice, aesthetics twice, performance twice, and I'm on strong now. Uh, so, I definitely started to rewire my brain a little bit more on that, but I'm always like, what can I do more? What can I do more? No. Uh, just cause I do don't feel comfortable in my skin at the moment, but I'm like, okay, patience, just, you know, tell, you know, do what they say and just be patient with it. You, you might be in a, uh, the Goldilocks zone right now. That's why I'm, uh, before I give advice on what to, to go from where you're at, I don't know if I want to move you because if you're eating 3,000 calories, which is a good amount of calories for your size, healthy, and you're seeing strength go up, my question would be, one, how, how how long or how consistent have you actually done body fat testing? Like, I would actually have loved to seen where your body fat test was before the 3,000 calories or the increase of 3,000 calories, where it is now, and then probably have you check back in in two to three weeks again for me so I can see hey, maybe – maybe where you're at right now is a, a really nice place. And I don't know if you necessarily need to cut right now. So do you have any idea of where the body fat percentage was before the 3000 calorie bump and where it is now? No. So I just started doing that. I would say right around the holidays, uh, just cause my brother and I, we were just, we we're trying to both get fit and yeah. uh, we did a uh, body, you know, uh, did the whole uh, measuring around the wrist and all that stuff. So I was about 33% body fat. Uh, and that was at the beginning of the year. Uh, but I haven't checked my weight since then. I really haven't checked measurements since then. Um, and I really didn't want to up until maybe about April or so, just kind of wait the 90 days out to just kind of see where I'm at. The only reason why I would suggest doing it sooner than later is just so that we can get an idea of if maybe nothing needs to be changed and you just need to keep heading this direction, right? So for example, if 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 we bump to 3,000 calories since the beginning of, since the beginning of the year, and you're not gaining any body fat, especially if your body fat percentage has stayed the same or gone down, we're, we're doing really good. It's just, and, and people that, oh, okay. that, that are chronic over trainers that already know, you know, you have kind of a tendency of this, 
tend to do this to themselves. They sabotage themselves, not even realizing like they're actually doing really good and actually moving in the, the perfect direction, but because it's not happening fast enough or they feel like they can do more, they change, yeah. they change everything up. And then you end up shooting yourself in the foot when it's like, actually we're perfect where we're at. So I'd love for you to get a body fat uh, test again and see where you're at. And what, what I'd be looking for is with that increase of calories, did your body fat percentage stay the same or go down? If it stayed the same or went down, you're probably in a really good place right now. Now, if it went up, say a few percent, and you also gained weight on the scale, then maybe we need to adjust your calories a little bit and and reduce a little bit. But I have a feeling you might be in the, the nice little sweet spot right now. And it's just purely, you just need to string some time together of being consistent with the reverse, like yeah. the, trying to build strength, because I think that's serving you right now, both yeah. metabolically, strength wise, building muscle wise. I think it's probably, you're probably in a good place. Yeah, I agree. Julian, you, you mentioned you feel uncomfortable in your skin. Is that a feeling that you felt for a long time before you got to 250, all that stuff? Is this something like looking back? Is, do, you, do you feel like, oh, I'm, I'm just uncomfortable? Okay. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even in high school, I was 140 pounds and I was like, I don't like this. Okay. So you got, there's some, there's something underlying here and the, and the workouts aren't going to fix it. Or, or shall I say the results from the workouts aren't going to fix it. Now, if you use your workouts uh, as a way to become more present, as a way to feel your body more, as a way to become more comfortable within your own skin, then it can definitely be a tool that can help you um, work with that. But the results from the workout, the weight loss or whatever, I'm going to tell you right now, I can, I can, if I snap my fingers and make you ripped, you're not going to have permanent uh, you know, resolvement of that feeling uncomfortable in your own skin. This is coming from someone who deals with that themselves. So this is something else. And what you don't want to do is turn exercise into a drug that you abuse because it it will damage you like a drug will for well, sure. And many times when this is like if he's hitting hitting it right on on spot here, like a lot of times that will cause you to make corrections when you don't need That's to. That's right. So you start getting in your own head and you're not happy with the results or you don't you're not happy with the way you look. And so even though you are like in the perfect spot and things are going great, somehow you convince yourself otherwise and then you make a drastic change and then you then the results yeah. are worse and then you get even more frustrated yeah. and you're doing more work. Holy and explain so describe your workouts to me. When you're following a workout, He's doing are anabolic, you, right? Yeah, I know that, but not the not the actual workout, but are oh. you do you have headphones on? Are you what are you doing in between sets? Are you working out alone? What does it look like? Yeah, usually just working out alone, have headsets in and then usually either have you guys in as a podcast or, you know, just some music in or something just to, and then in between uh, right now, since it's, uh, I have two minute uh, rest in between uh, sets, I'm just either on Instagram or something, just kind of yeah. relaxing, just right. trying not to do anything. I'm going to give you some advice. It's going to be really hard. Okay. And even this, this is going to hurt us too. So I don't want you to listen to anything <laughs> while you work out. I want you to work out with no music, no podcast, no nothing. I don't want you to take your phone with you and I want you to have a notebook. And in your notebook, you can have your workout and you can write down how many sets you did, how many reps, all that stuff. And I want you to just sit in your body with your workout. So we're going to practice feeling your body while you work out. And what that's going to do is it's going to turn the workout into a tool that's going to help you feel more comfortable in your own skin. It's going to feel very awkward at first, but you'll find at the end of the workout, you're going to feel something different than you did before. So while you're working out, no music, no nothing, no book, no distractions, and you're just sitting in it. Just give that a shot and okay. see, how, see what happens. If you if you take that advice and do it, something that'll help you because uh, it is challenging for us to do this. Uh, when I when I'm doing this, I'm sitting down. A lot of times I'll close my eyes. I'll be my head's down, and I'm like envisioning the the lift I just did, and I'm thinking about the next one. Right, I'm thinking about how I felt going through that. You're just being present. That dumbbell press. Yeah. Where did I feel it the most? And like, how, what did the form look like? I'm envisioning what the next set looks like, and so that process will help like so you're not just like want thoughts are wandering i'm really thinking about the movement and what i'm doing yeah. at that moment yeah workouts can be either extremely um effective at making you feel present and in your body or it's the double-edged sword you can use workouts to distract the hell out of yourself and take yourself outside of your body all depends on on how you do it so if you do that practice yeah. it'll it'll help you become more comfortable in your own skin i want to i want to put you in the form if you're not already in there and then yeah, I, I, I'm in the forum. Okay, oh, so, good. So I would love, I would love, I would love for you when you get a chance to get the 
to go test your body fat the same way you did last time and give me an update on that. And then we can be a little more precise with what yeah. potentially to do with the calories and stuff, because I have a feeling you're probably actually in a really good place. If you are, that's great. I would stay there. Yeah. So yeah. let's let, let oh. me stick to making sure you, I mean, what you always hear us talk about, right? So protein intakes, most important, right? So hit that protein intake, whatever your goal weight is, the weight that you ideally want to be hit that in grams of protein every single day. Don't miss that. Be, be religious about that. And then as far as where your calories are, well, let's keep them where they're at for now until you get that body fat test and give me feedback on. And then just tag us in the forum. Yeah. And then from there, I'll give you better advice on whether I think you should cut or just stay where you're at. Got it. Okay. That, that, that's actually what I was going to ask you. If, so what I was doing is that every phase, I just kind of up, you know, anywhere from 50 to 100 calories and was kind of going up from there. So before doing that, I guess going to the next phase, you guys want me to yes. do the measurements again and just kind of test? Yes. Yeah, yes. yes. Let's, let's test and see. And that might be exactly the advice we give. Is, is I We think, may say stay on that. Yeah, stay on that path of every phase or so, bump the calories because I think it's serving you. I mean, I think just without having the exact numbers in front of us, we're, the fact that you saw strength go up, you're able to eat 3,000, you, you didn't make any comments of saying like, oh, I feel like I put all body fat on. So it sounds like you are heading in the right direction. We may just stay the course uh, with what you're doing. And I, I dropped my my protein down to about 165 grams. I was doing about, uh, when I was in the cut, I was about 210. And then I dropped it down to about 180 and then 165. Just because I, I don't really know what target weight is good for me. And so I just kind of did lean body mass. And when I did the- That works. The, uh, yeah, that's fine. The, it's 165. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I was doing, okay, okay. No, no, that's good. I didn't know if it was too low or not. I know it's not too low, but I would shoot for one sixty five to one eighty. Yeah, you're range. fine. You're fine going a little okay. over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you go, you go going a little over would be great. Um, but uh, I wouldn't go much lower than the one sixty. But you're that's fine. It's yep. good. Okay. Okay. That, no. Yeah. That that works. I, I I think I was just like you said. I was just getting in my head. Is just yes. I don't see any body fat going down. Yep. So yeah. I was just like, okay, I guess I'm just in the same place I was a year ago. No, no, let's uh, test. Let's test. I have a feeling that you've at least built muscle, which will also cause the body fat percentage to most likely go down. So let's see where your body fat test is. We'll go from there. Okay. Sounds good. All right, bro. All right, hold on. That, that uh, you know, underlying feeling, I mean, that's, that's me right there. And uh, boy, I can make my workouts work for me or work against me, depending on how present I am within them, you know? Yeah, I think this is so common where um you know somebody hears advice or it decides that okay this is what i need to do and then they don't see fast enough results or they they have body dysmorphia and they d doesn't matter even if they were seeing yep, results yep. they'd still find a way to distort that yep. and then they make a course correction when they were actually in this like perfect no now, need yeah, yeah what i hope we hear from him right is that He's actually stayed the same or maybe even reduced his body fat percentage while cutting out cardio and increasing to 3,000 yeah. calories. That is a massive win. Yeah. yeah. And that means we are moving in he the right. He did say in his question, too, he feels better. He's getting better yeah. sleep. He's got better mood. Stronger. Yep. Yeah. So that tells me that he was he's, he's probably nourishing himself. Yeah. Our next caller is Danielle from Indiana. Hey, Danielle. How can we help you? Okay. Uh, to be somewhat respectful of your time i'm just gonna read straight off of my email or else we'll be here for the next hour and i don't think any of us have time for that All so right, okay. i am a pediatric speech language pathologist which is also known as a speech therapist who works with kids um i just recently went full-time in my own private practice i contract through my business with a school district three days a week and then twice a week i'm in my own office this is not public knowledge, but might be after this airs. I am expanding and will be done with the school contract and going full time in my own office um, in May, which I'm very excited about. I was previously a personal trainer before and during grad school, and I legitimately loved it, but knew I wanted to pursue a career full time working with kids. Um, my late mother was a personal trainer as well. And you know, being in that world made me feel close to her. So as I've looked at expanding my business and building my quote unquote dream career, I would really like to bring fitness into my speech therapy sessions. Um, there are two SLPs in Arizona who are doing it. So I know it's not like too crazy. Not. Um, and just a few brief reasons as to why I want to do this. Obviously, the physical and mental benefits of exercise, um, providing a safe space for caregivers and their children to exercise providing social opportunities uh, with varying for people with varying ability levels um, and have a space in which they can learn to be a part of a team or just a space that they can be part of a team. 
I also, this is the biggest one I think, is I really would like to offer some um, access to some gym equipment so caregivers while I'm working with their kids can go and take like 20 to 30 minutes for themselves because that's often not built into their schedules. They do so much for their children and it would be nice to have a space that they can go, great, you're working with my kid, I'm going to go lift some weights. Um, In theory... I would like to incorporate fitness into sessions in which it's appropriate for that particular client. I'm not going to throw an 18 month old, 18 month old kid on a kettlebell, but for my older kids, it would be really nice to incorporate some physical movement and introduce them to weightlifting. I would also love to have an evening like group fitness. Don't hate me yet. Opportunity that would be like a small class size um, and focus on practicing those movements and then cheering each other on, which is that social aspect of things. So My two questions are, one, if I pursue this, would you recommend doing an adaptive personal training certification or something through somewhere like NASM? The adaptive offers a lot of specifics regarding working with people with different ability levels, which I really do like. But if I do this, I also don't want to just do something to say I have a certification and go do it. I want to make sure it's a good certification that helps me help people in the best capacity that I can in the setting that I'm in. And then number two, if I do pursue this and don't have a shit ton of money because I'm a new small business, what would you recommend in terms of having like key pieces of equipment to have available for the clients and their caregivers? This great. I love yeah, cool this idea. idea so much. I love, I love it too. Thanks. Absolutely love this you idea. You should be though in our trainer coaching course already, by yeah, the way. Yeah. yeah we this have a, the type of stuff that we talk about in there with all of it. Yeah. We have a new, we have a new trainer course. I'm sorry. You're, you're I said I know I wanted to get in on it, but I wasn't quite sure if it was appropriate for someone like me. 100 percent, it is appropriate. Yeah, for someone what you'll like you. what you'll get from it really is about it's the business side. It's it, how to build a business. That's, now, as far as like uh, exercise applications, okay. okay. So, number one, I think this is a phenomenal idea. I think it's going to help the parents. I think it's going to also help the children. <laughs> I think movement um, and moving the whole body probably has carryover to uh, improvements in speech. You would know this better than I would, but I would bet money that this uh, would also help quite a bit. Um, just knowing how the mm-hmm. muscles interact and how kinesthetic awareness builds and all that stuff. So I think this would be yep. huge. I think for an exercise cert, so our cert is, or our course is going to teach you how to build your business, how to get more clients, how to network, how to get leads, all that stuff. As far as a right. course to for exercise and stuff, correctional exercise certifications are going to be your best bet. So you have your NASM CPT, and then they have a correctional exercise specialist. I think you're going to get the most value out of that because you're probably going to have the parent do 20, 30 minutes worth of movement. Correctional exercise mm-hmm. going to have them, is going to give you the best bang for your buck. There's also going to be carryover to children. I think that's going to be better. And then as far as equipment is concerned, you don't need equipment. Yeah. Man, you need like... Uh, dumbbells, dumbbells, physio ball, okay. bands. bands that's, it. that's it. Yeah, that's you'll need you nothing need. else. Perfect. Maybe a suspension trainer. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I would say a suspension trainer. I'd yeah. use a suspension trainer for damn near okay. everything. If in a perfect totally. world, I would enroll you in NASM ASAP. Enroll you in our coaching course okay. ASAP. Those would be the two things you'd be going okay. through right now. So we're helping you on the on the business side. Also, you're networking with all the other coaches and trainers that are also scaling unique businesses like this inside there. And then after you finish the NSM CPT, then moving to the CES, like Sal said, and I literally would invest in a suspension trainer and some bands to start off with. Like, that's it. Like that would be literally all I would need to get going on my idea. And then most of what you're, this is such a great idea, but I think it's so novel that the, the most of the effort work would be, how would I structure this? How would I put my packages together? How would I present this? to my yes. clients. How would I not? Okay. Cause you had a lot of really good ideas. I would probably help you try and focus on a couple of these to roll out. And then we could always build on okay. that. Right. Yep. What you don't want to do is spread yourself so thin right. and you have all these different offerings. It's like, let, let's one, let's test and see Systemize it. what are some of these parents uh, needing or wanting more. And then we can start to gather. Okay. This seems okay. to be that, that your group idea is the best idea. Or maybe you see like, Oh wow. Maybe it's the, whenever I'm coaching a, a child, I also have a routine that I can give them to do so let's let's figure out what they want okay. and then let's build the structure as far as your offer around that but this is again this is the stuff that i think that's in our course that you're going to get a lot of benefit from is the business yeah. side from us and then the nasm and then i know you mentioned too about not having a shit ton of money there's a payment option for ours so it's like a monthly thing so it's not like a big you can, okay. you can pay one lump sum or you can do the monthly 
offering in it also. Yeah. So it's a little bit easier. You know, off the top of my head, Danielle, um, the group, small group exercise would be good for this benefit here. You would get other parents to meet each other who are going through similar yes. things with their kids. Okay. Now, as far as the, the workout stuff, I would not, this is me personally, but I, I'd bet money on this. I don't think it'd be valuable to focus on fat loss, muscle gain, like fitness goals. Yeah. It would be about strength and functionality. Yeah, functional, like functionality, correctional exercise, feel better, okay. neck pain, shoulder pain, like stress, and that's all correctional exercise stuff. So what I want to send to you is, I'm, if you don't have uh, Maps Prime Pro, I'm going to send that to you because there's movements in there that you could use that are all correctional exercise based. Okay, okay? and you could use those right now, and none of them require any equipment. So I'll give you that just so you can look okay. at that and see what it is. And then the the rest that I said, okay. I think, again, I think this is a phenomenal idea. I think if you really do this right and piece it together right, um, I think you're going to develop some some long-term clientele from from this uh, yeah. particular approach. But just too, like in terms of, of our course and why it's so relevant to you is it like the, the business end of it mm -hmm. is the most important. Yes. Like the ideas are great. Uh, but really being able to sustain it, to be able to, to keep like revenue coming in, to have consistent revenue, to have predictability to it, you know, create systems out of it. That is like your biggest priority. And then the ideas will kind of form themselves around that. Totally. Okay, cool. Right. I'm really appreciative that you guys didn't say it was a terrible idea. That's very, <laughs> that's very a, comforting. A, and no, I love it. I think it's a great I idea. It's, it's a good idea, but the way you execute it is going to determine whether or not it's going to succeed yeah, we, or not. We, we want it to succeed. It's, so. you know, also, parents that invest in this, yeah. I, I hired a speech therapist. Okay, they, I mean, that type of person is a good potential client. That if I if you're willing to spend that kind of money to help yeah. help your kid with his, his his speech come along, I'm most likely to invest in myself on things like that. Especially if you can tie the connecting right. the two of them together of like, hey, you doing this, your 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 child seeing you do this together, you guys could do these things. It's only going to benefit you. It's going to benefit them. Like, I, I could totally see right. the hundred percent the, the presentation on this. Like, so I love it. Awesome, thanks, and I appreciate the input on the business side of things. That's very much where I lack. I know how to help people. But the actual business side of things is very much yeah, an area of common. growth for me, I yeah. should okay. say. Most, yeah, most good trainers. <laughs> Go to mindpumpfitnesscoaching.com. That's where you'll learn about the course. And that's all it's about is building that. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Thanks, guys, right, so thanks, much. Danielle. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. You know, it's this just reminded me of an, a conversation I had uh, with a, a therapist. Um, I asked her because she sees kids too. And I said, so what's it like seeing like little kids? Like, what do you do? What do you do when you sit down and talk to an eight-year-old? She says, it's all the parents. It's has the kids or don't have the problems. It comes from the parents. <laughs> yeah. And so my point with this is when you're dealing with situations like this, and I'm not saying this is not in that same category, but my point is we place so much focus on the kids that the parents are under stress. It's difficult. Maybe they're working two jobs or whatever. And it's so much less effective because the parents can't be as effective, right? Yeah. But now imagine the parent goes in there the kid is doing 30 minutes of speech therapy and mom is over there doing correctional exercise movements that makes her feel amazing at the end of it. Like you don't think that's going to have a carryover yeah, to the kid? Sure. It's, an, it's, a, it's a great idea. No, it's a brilliant idea. But build, building the business part, that's <laughs> oh, that's, that's the, the challenge, yeah. 100%. That's the challenge for all trainers and coaches. So. Look, if you love the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out all of our free fitness guides. They can help you with your fitness goals and they're free. You can also find us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano. Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. 